Welcome into Dallas Mavericks today by Chat Sports. Chase Senior here with you. Hope all of the MFFLs are having a fantastic week. As always, we have a great show on tap for you today as we get you caught up with the latest Dallas Mavericks news and rumors. And we start off with this tweet from Callie Kaplan. She said this about the Mavs meeting with the New York Knicks and their failure to complete a sign and trade for Jalen Brunson. Mavs met with the Knicks brass multiple times this week in Las Vegas, including a dinner, to talk about a sign and trade, but it was always unlikely because the Mavs had little leverage beyond possible NBA penalties coming for tampering, like producer Coop is calling for. Now Jalen Brunson is going to leave for nothing. That is official. So he's going to sign that deal that is worth around $104 million, which makes him one of the highest paid point guards in the NBA. Now, as far as the Mavs plan and what they've done so far this offseason, I like the signing of JaVale McGee. Outside of that, What's going on with this team, and what is their direction a year after they made a run to the Western Conference Finals and won a playoff series for the first time going back to 2011 when Dirk Nowitzki was dethroning the Miami Heat dynasty? I'm not really sure what the Mavs are trying to do here. Not hitting up the Cleveland Cavaliers? about Colin Sexton. You don't have a backup plan B in which you had weeks and months to plan for in case Brunson left because the paper trail of him going New York to New York was there for a little while. And it goes back to Donnie Nelson not giving him the extra year on that deal. So I'm kind of unhappy and I'm unfrustrated with what Dallas is doing and their lack of planning moving ahead. Year one of the Nico Harrison, Jason Kidd tenure got off to a really good start, but going into year two, still a lot of looming questions. Now, as for the offensive moves, or off-season moves, you add to the offense, I should say, by bringing in Christian Wynn, who can play the four, he can play the five as a big, who can shoot the three ball, kind of like Chris Stapp's Porzingis, but I actually might like Christian Wood's game a little bit more because I don't have the injury concerns of KP. And then JaVale McGee, you needed a rim protector. You needed to bulk up your defensive front court. You needed a rim runner. That was a hole on this team throughout the playoffs, and you were able to fulfill that need three years, 20 mil for JaVale McGee. We move forward on today's show. Tim Cato of The Athletic saying this about what the Mavericks are going to do with their rotation and their starting lineup, Jason Kidd has declared that Spencer Dinwiddie and JaVale McGee will be the starters, joining incumbent starters Luka Doncic and Dorian Finney-Smith. I've been told the team's planning to keep Reggie Bullock as the fifth starter. As things currently stand, though, the team's splashiest acquisition this summer, Christian Wood, will come in off the bench. This would be the Mavericks' nearest facsimile of the starting lineup that brought them postseason success two playmaking guards two three and d wings and a tone setting center who plays fewer minutes than his counterparts off the bench lastly dinwiddie replaces brunson and mcgee takes over for dwight powell who started 89 of this past season's 100 games but averaged fewer minutes than Kristaps porzingis and maxi kleba so we talked about this earlier this week the mavericks roster right now might be a little bit deeper but is it better as compared to last year? You're replacing Jalen Brunson up to this point with Spencer Dinwiddie. So the thinking makes sense, but will Dinwiddie as a starter work? And will Christian Wood buy in a guy who, with Houston, there were some rumblings about him being unhappy with his usage and his role. As for what Mark Cuban said about losing Jalen Brunson, speaking on this really for the first time, at least publicly, bringing back Timmy Hardaway, who was hurt the whole time, and adding Christian Wood, I think will replace that scoring pretty easily. But my concern here isn't necessarily the lack of scoring production. It's what Jalen Brunson gives you. It's the fact that you stole him in the second round as a guy who fell to you. You failed to give him that extra year, which is notable. And also, you could have given him a contract last offseason or during this year and given him a deal worth around $20 million in average annual value, let's say three years 60. You're saving $44 million compared to the asking price. So if you say so, Cubes, look, you've won one championship. I support you as an owner. You've done some good things, but... Some of the things you say and the star players who you lose out on, it's a little bit problematic and understandably so. That's why Mavericks fans are frustrated. Up to this point, how would you grade the Mavs off season? It continues to fluctuate. And as the days go by, you're like, is another move going to happen? Or is Dinwiddie going to be the starter for JB? A, B, C, D, or F? Let us know. Now we want to pivot to Goran Dragic. Did he turn down Dallas because Dallas disrespected him? He goes to the Chicago Bulls. He's going to back up Lonzo Ball if healthy. But at this point, Dragic is a competitor. 
He's played in a lot of NBA playoff series. NBA Finals back a couple years ago with Miami. A lot of big international games with Slovenia. He wants to play more. Here's the problem. Didn't sign with the Mavs because they weren't going to offer him as many minutes as Chicago. Translated from Slovenian. I wasn't going to try to translate it myself. We were in talks with Dallas, Dragic said. They made an offer, but I decided not to take it. They wanted me to play one game and then sit for the next five. I know I can still easily play 20 minutes per game. I'm not ready to retire and just sit on the bench in a cheerleading role. So me saying Dragic, the utmost competitor, clearly his competitive nature factored into these contract negotiations. And if you're Dallas, why would you disrespect him like that? You brought in Marjanovic, Boban, because he's Luka's friend. Why not bring in a better player in Goran Dragic who could actually have a role on this team as compared to Boban and make Luka Doncic happy in the process? Mavs likely felt that Dragic was and is what he was in Brooklyn where he averaged seven points per game, little less than five assists, and the shooting numbers, not good at all. Now, could Dragic put up these numbers with Chicago and it end up being a win? For Dallas, certainly, but I actually think that Dragic was a better player in there. It was just a mess in Brooklyn all throughout the year. Still need someone who can handle the rock. You can talk about Dinwiddie as a starting point guard. Who's going to be the backup starting point guard? Who is going to handle primary ball handling responsibilities? At some point, you want to take some of the burden off of Luka Doncic. And if he's off the floor, you're going to have to rush to get him back into the game if nobody can handle the rock. As for available point guards on the free agency market, my goodness, slim pickings here. DJ Augustine, who's been washed for a couple of years. Campazzo, I kind of like him. Played internationally, had a lot of success last year with Denver. I watched him. I'm like, yo, he's got some wiggle for sure. Ryan Archie Diacono, kind of a journeyman NBA player up to this point. Championship pedigree from his days at Villanova. And then Chris Dunn, who has never reached those expectations of being that former first-round pick in the lottery. So, name a point guard you want the Mavericks to sign. Any of these guys, let me know. A different guy who we missed, let us know because that helps us with some of our show planning moving forward. And while you're down there, subscribe to the channel, Mavericks Today. My boy Harrison Graham is going to be back at some point, but right now he's eating fine meats, cheeses, and some good pasta in Italy. YouTube.com slash Mavs TV. We're bringing you the best Mavericks coverage. We round out with this. Could the Mavericks trade for Donovan Mitchell? Should the Mavs trade for Jordan Clarkson or Malik Beasley? If the Jazz blow it up, is the D-Mitch trade going to happen? There are all these rumors, and look, somewhat unrealistic for sure. But we know that crazy things happen in the NFL and the NBA because it is a booming business right now. Now, Donovan Mitchell might be a little bit unlikely. Jordan Clarkson, if the Jazz blow it up, could be a little bit more likely. And his scoring punch off the bench would basically give you what Spencer Dinwiddie did last year, where in a couple of big playoff games, he was awesome. 16 points per game last year, always going to be in the running for winning sixth man of the year. Two and a half assists, 41 0.9% from the floor and just a decent three-point shooter. Very inconsistent, but that's why he's a sixth man. As for Malik Beasley, last year got a little bit cold, but he has shown that he can be a pretty solid player. 20 points per game, 45.5% from the floor, 41% from three. Effective field goal percentage here, Sam, 56%. So Malik Beasley, pretty good player and scorer from 2019 to 2021. And if you get that production, that's pretty good numbers right there. And you don't have to give up a ton for Beasley or Clarkson. As for this trade idea and really what sparked the conversation, it's coming from SI.com. Mavericks receive Jordan Clarkson, Malik Beasley. Jazz received Tim Hardaway Jr., Davis Bertans, and a future first-round pick. Now, I don't know if I want to squander a first-round pick. And honestly, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. can basically be that role of Jordan Clarkson. Malik Beasley is the win there because he's better than Davis Bertans and has more value throughout a regular season and playoff run. As for Clarkson and Beasley, they'd be great additions, but this is pennies on the dollar for Utah. That's really what it comes down to, and I'm not sure that this trade is going to happen. But what do you think? Would you do it if you were Mark Cuban, you know, living in Highland Park, kicking it, Nico Harrison as well. Would you trade, uh, make this trade? Why for yes and for no? Let us know. I would not do it if I'm Dallas because Tim Hardaway Jr., basically the same guy as Jordan Clarkson. So those are my thoughts on this. You let us know your thoughts in the comment section right now. Uh, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Mavs TV. We're going to continue to pump out the best Mavericks coverage, whether it's me or Harrison Graham, keeping you in the know. Year-round with all things going down with the Dallas Mavericks, 
Really intriguing and interesting position this franchise finds itself in after making it to the Western Conference Finals and their big loss of Jalen Brunson this offseason.